All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the new or one of the newer releases for Demco knives and one of my newer acquisitions, the Shark Cup. Now, I've talked about this knife a little bit in the past, but today we're going to be breaking it down and talking about it and ultimately kind of comparing it to another popular smaller knife, and that is, or by Demco knives, and that is the 8020.5. So on this side, on the on the left side for you guys, we have the 8020.5, and on the right side for you guys, we have the Shark Cub. So this is essentially what they look like overall size comparison, but let's jump into a little bit more of the minutia. So first off, the Shark Cub is a reasonably new drop for them, um, or for Demco knives, and some of the distinguishing things for this is that it is meant to be probably, to my knowledge, the smallest like production folder that Demco makes, and it is pretty small, but I do actually like a few things about it. Anyways, before we talk about ergos and what I like about it, let's continue to go over it. So the other distinguishing factor of this, while it is Taiwanese made, it is still rocking CPM 20 CV. And to be clear with the Taiwanese manufacturer of this knife, it is still a very good knife. Honestly, on par with any of um, <clears throat> Spyderco's Taiwanese made blades. So when people see this, invariably there's about, these cost about $200, but just remember that there are some very high quality Taiwanese made blades out there, such as um, Spyderco's Spidey Chef, which goes for over $200 regularly. You can sometimes find these on secondary for like $180, but these things are not super cheap at all. So do understand that, you know, there are some pretty high quality knives coming out of Taiwan. And so I'm not too appalled by the price, especially so long as it's not like, you know, a $500 knife. This uh, definitely is, I would say, you know, reasonably a $200 knife. So like I said, CPM 20 CV on that blade. And this one in particular is rocking the spear point. Now I brought out all of my um, or my two um, 8020.5s to talk about all of the tip variations on the Shark Cub because in between all of these knives, I actually have all the tips that this, or I should say blade shapes rather, that the Shark Cub can come in. So of course, as you see here, it can come in a spear point like this. They also offer it though in the more traditional styles of the clip point that you guys see on this 8020.5. And then of course they offer their Shark's Foot, which is kind of a modified sheep's foot, uh, worn cliff kind of blade shape. So they offer it um, in all three of these blade shapes. Like I said, I just saw happen to have the spear point and I actually kind of like the spear point most of all, particularly because I have 80 20.5s in the other two aforementioned blade shapes. So this is the um, different blade shapes that they come in. Now, of course, um, another thing to note, all of these blades are going to be using the shark lock, which is kind of Demko's kind of bread and butter nowadays. So a lot of people, I will say this is actually kind of a surprising lock because I've handled or handled handed this knife to a lot of my friends and they actually kind of struggle with the shark lock I'm not gonna lie it's not the most intuitive but once you get the hang of it you can whip it out and I do ultimately like the shark lock because essentially it combines a lot of the strength and rigidity of a lockback but with a one-hand user operation so you can use this you know, one-handed and also to like other people have noted this is one of those nice blade shapes that or sorry, lock shapes that, or lock styles, I guess you'd say, that you don't have to worry about readjusting your hand. So unlike a liner lock or a frame lock, where you have to get your hand out of the way of the blade, this you do not. So I am a pretty big fan of those uh, kind of reasons of the shark lock. So lastly, the other thing that I find um, interesting and the other thing that I like about the shark cub is that you'll notice in here they have removed um, or taken a more minimalistic uh, kind of stance towards the liners of this knife. So this knife follows what I would kind of consider a griptilian style lock or liner mechanism. So realistically, there are steel liners on this knife, but only where the locking interface is. So the locking interface is steel reinforced, but the rest of the handle is just plain G10. And so that probably cuts down on cost a little bit, but does also cut down on weight. And this is important to note because the 8020.5s are fully, um, they have full embedded steel liners. So hopefully you guys can see here, not sure how well it will pop up on camera, but these do have full steel liners. Like I said, they are um, embedded, so they are, they're not like 
super visible from just a side angle, but these do have full steel liners and you can definitely tell when you pick up a Shark Cub versus an 8020.5, there is a significant weight difference, even though there isn't a significant height or length difference. These are actually fairly similar in size, just the Shark Cub's a little bit lighter. So anyways, um, let's talk about direct comparison versus these two knives. So like I said, the Shark Cub is designed to be one of um, Demco knives. Like I think they're small production knife and it does show as you guys can see here hopefully um, this is a little bit smaller it's not honestly significantly smaller and so I'm not really like that upset with the size on it I don't mind it at all um, but it is a little smaller so the other thing to note is that it does follow a very similar um, you know overall path so this is a shark cub so this is not designed to be like a radical change from this the only primary difference is obviously a little bit shorter and you kind of lose some of this um, like flare at the end and so take it for what it's worth but to be honest a lot of the ergonomics are very similar if not the same the other thing i like and appreciate that the shark cub ditched is that that on these uh, 8020.5s, similar to the 8020s, they have a kind of like dual opening mechanism where, as you guys can see here, you have a thumb stud and an opening hole or opening slot, as you will. And so I'm not really sure why that is because unlike on certain knives, like say a Strider SNG or a Hinder, where those little like studs actually act as the stop, like they act as a um, stop stopping point for for the like folding knife these are purely cosmetic or for opening so these do not interface with the locking mechanism at all they don't tension it so it kind of is confusing to me that they have these you know like dual redundancy especially on top of a knife that once you get good you can you know just throw the knife out with the locking mechanism as well. So a little bit of an over redundancy in my opinion that I'm glad that they got rid of when it comes to the Shark Cub because what they did with the Shark Cub is they just enlarged that slot so that it's easier to just spidey flick out or to slow roll if you wanted to. So those are some notes about it. As far as um, clips go, basically the same. They're gonna be deep carry clips. So not a whole lot has changed there. Of course, um, the Shark Cub as kind of goes with more of a high-end knife as opposed to a little bit of a lower-end knife like the 8020.5 they have ditched the backspacer and just gone with standoffs so i like it um, i will say there are quite a few um, screws and stuff there are quite a few screws in this and so about the same as you know an 8020.5 but it's not a minimalistic design as some knives are but it's really not a huge deal in my opinion it's just fine so as far as it goes, here's the other um, 8020.5 I have. Like I said, pretty much the same kind of concepts here, but the thing that I do like, um, like now kind of just talking about things I like about the Shark Cub. So like I've already said, and kind of talked about the opening slot versus the thumb stud and opening slot, I like that. But the other thing that I do enjoy is um, they really kept most of the ergonomics very similar to the 8020 and 20.5 and something that they did retain that I'm a big fan of especially on the smaller platform like this is that they still have a area for you to choke up on it's not a super you know noticeable um, kind of like forward finger choil like you'd see on something like a Strider SNG or a Hinder where it's very obvious that they want you to put your finger there um, or that you can put your finger there this is a little bit less um, noticeable but you definitely have room there totally to choke up on that blade as you guys can see there and get a good purchase i really like that like i've said in smaller knife platforms because it really helps extend your handle and give you that extra precision because honestly like with most smaller folders like this the vast majority of what you're going to want to be doing is more precise more fine tasks so being able to choke right up on that cutting edge like get right there on the cutting edge is going to allow you to have better precision and control over your cutting edge at the end of the day so those are some things i do enjoy about it as far as blade thickness goes they do have about the same or sorry the shark cup is a little bit thinner it is a bit thinner so um, there is that extra slicey um, lastly they did retain the jimping on here not the largest fan of the jimping on this to be honest but it's not bad it's not like super abrasive so it's it's okay and i know that demco knives as a whole is more of a fan of jimping once again as you can tell with the 8020.5s having jimping 
thing as well. So anyways, um, <clears throat> That really covers just about everything on this knife. Uh, the Shark Cup is pretty cool. I thought I would break it down and compare it to the 8020.5 because the 20.5 is designed to be the smaller version of the 8020. And so uh, this Shark Cup is designed to be the even smaller predecessor or um, successor, I should say, to the uh, 8020. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that brief overview and kind of look at those knives in comparison to the 8020.5. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.